Homegrown Talent. I'm John Reynolds, guest hosting for today. Michelle is unable to make it because she's attending her daughter's graduation party. So congratulations to Michelle's daughter for graduating high school. Today I have two members of Off the Dome with me, John Spignessi and Zach Borgstead. Say hi, gentlemen. How we doing? Hello, hello. I'm glad to have you on the show today. You guys are a really talented band. I've been your shows before, I've listened to your CD, and uh, at what age did you start your musical career? Hmm. I started about 13, started training earlier, um, maybe around eight years old. Uh, it took me about five years to kind of, like, get going and start, you know, expressing a real interest and, in, you know, developing my musical, you know, expose. What about you, John Spignessi? Probably, I would say, probably around 13. I feel like that's the age that everybody usually starts doing uh, stuff like that. Yeah, I'd mm. say probably 13, just ever since. Loved it ever since. 13, like, you know, you'd start a middle school band. Right. Get everyone right. together. Exactly. Practice in your mom's garage. Right. Mm -hmm. Have a good time. Um, what, what was your inspiration to play music? Like, what, what really made you feel like, I need to do this, I need to know music? need to be able to perform in front of people and entertain them. It's a desire to just, you know, bring in a new kind of unique experience to someone's life. Um, I've done some work in music therapy. Um, I volunteered at a hospice, and I can tell you that uh, music connects people in, in very powerful ways. Um, I've kind of developed that, uh, and it's really people and experience with people that that drives me now um at the time when i was 13 i just was sick of playing the same five notes on cello <laughs> i was like i need to play guitar oh, uh, everyone loves guitar guitar it's just such a cool instrument it's so fun to play so satisfying when you pluck the strings it is it is versatile tones and everything oh man i love it what about you? What was your inspiration? <laughs> well, I saw the movie School of Rock <laughs> with Jack Black, and then I, I, that was that was it, man. I re just remember thinking that that's exactly what I wanted to do, and you know, then you know, I got like a secondhand one off eBay, you know, a little acoustic. But that's when I got into like you know, slowing CDs down and trying to play along with them because I didn't want to sound just right. I wanted to sound exactly right, you know, so. <laughs> It's probably well, I guess, so. I guess thank you, Jack Black, for making that movie. <laughs> uh, when I grow up, I want to be just like Jack Black. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, every, everyone's got to go somewhere. Everyone's got to learn learn their their craft. Do you guys have any mm -hmm. educational background? Like, what, what's your educational background? Well, I'm mainly self-taught, um, but I play every day. I make a point. Um, uh, I think the person who educated me most um, would be Eric Stenson from Weathersfield High School. Oh, he was a he was a grand inspiration. Um, you know, great guitarist, great teacher. Always had something positive to say. Kept us motivated. What about you, Spinks? Was the question again? <laughs> the uh, educational background. Yeah, right? what's, what's your educational uh, background? I, you know, I pretty much in the run of the mill. I went to the high school four years. I didn't t really take many music classes in high school. You know, basic stuff. I took guitar, it, uh, guitar one with, oh, what was his name? What was that professor's name? It's at Southern. It wasn't Eric Skelton. Triffin. Skelton. Neil Skelton. Neil Skelton. <laughs> that man. Oh, my God. That, that man knows how to play. I only knew that because I also attend Southern, and I also know of that teacher, so, you know, I can't read your mind. <laughs> You're pretty good at it. <laughs> Thanks. But, uh, yes, Skelton was a great, Fantastic. great teacher. I feel like the best people to learn guitar from is just like an old guy, an old guy who's been around the block. He knows good. He knows all of the guitar. Right. And you have a problem, he knows exactly how to fix it. Indeed. Indeed. Very true. So, did you guys take any? I know. I know you both went to college. Did you take any music courses in college? Yeah, um, I took a jazz class uh, with 
a wonderful musician, Nick Biello. Uh, he is currently in Connecticut. Plays with uh, his girlfriend, I believe. Um, I'm not sure if, if she's his fiance or, or wife at the moment. I, I know they're at least girlfriend and boyfriend, Christine Tambakis. And, uh, you know, Nick taught me so much about improvisation and how to communicate with a band. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm grateful for, for his instruction as well. Um, he also did a few electronic courses, but that was over at Naugatuck Valley Community College. Mm. See, improv is a really important thing with you guys, right? Because your band name is Off the Dome, so right. mm -hmm. you got to be able to play music Off the Dome. Right. So it's, <laughs> it's about Precisely. communicating without verbally communicating, you know? Yeah. So. So you just look at each other and you kind of have an idea of... I mean, I've, I, got, I've been playing with this guy for so long where it's gotten to the point where he, he knows where I'm going most of the time. I know where he's going, so... So you guys seem to have pretty good chemistry together. Uh, how did you guys meet each other and end up playing together in the first place? Well, this is quite the story. Um, we're actually... I'll keep the answer simple. College is how we, is how we met. And... Uh, we had a, a pretty good community going. Uh, we, we had a dorm room. Uh, we lived on campus. Um, kind of got connected through friends. And uh, Spigs came and hung out with us one time and just started throwing down a freestyle. And oh, as, the name of the group. What was it? The Staircase. The, the Staircase. Yeah, um, yeah, because yeah. all of us lined up. We're, we're, you know, ascending heights and everything. So uh, <laughs> Spigs joined, just, joined us on a jam session. And... Uh, I like I like what he was doing. I asked him if he played guitar. He's like, "Yeah, I play guitar." So it's like, "Come on over, we'll jam sometime." And so we did did a couple sessions, you know, basic four track stuff. You know, not the tape deck, but it's digital age now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, music really does bring people together, and um, a lot of times there's a lot of parental support um, for musicians. Sometimes there isn't. Uh, do your parents support your musical aspirations? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, for me personally, my father was a musician when he was probably like 16, and he actually gave it up for a while. And then actually when he saw us start to play, it inspired him to pick it back up, which was which is very cool. I think, that, I think that's really cool, you know, because that's, I mean, that's what we're all about, inspiring other people, whether it be not even just music, just in any way, you know. Um, but in terms of support, you know, they're all. I know Zach's dad has been to what? He's been to a lot of shows too. He's, yes, he's come to he, a lot of shows. He's been to a number of them. Yep. And likewise, I have been to um, a number of his. A, a number of his yeah. as well. Um, he plays bluegrass, so we frequent, you know, he plays stand up bass, so I'm on acoustic guitar. And it's fun. It's bonding. It's imprinting. You know, music uh, uh, accesses a certain. You know, part in your brain. It's linked, highly linked to memory and um, motor functions as well. And, you know, um, well, spare you the jargon and whatnot. <laughs> it it is it is effective though for for memory. So definitely. So you ever need to remember anything? Make a song. It's true. <laughs> it's easier than you think. <laughs> it always is. But uh, so, are you just in a band? Is that like all you guys do? For money, or do you have other jobs? Like, is this your career? Is basically well, what I'm saying. You go first, yeah, man. where, where you do go we first. start with that one? Um, I'm a pharmacy technician. I'm nationally certified, and I'm a licensed with the state of Connecticut. I work at St. Mary's Hospital, the emergency department. So uh, that's 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 my full time job at the moment. Um, uh, as as far as other things, I, I just picked up a second position at the hospital. Um, monitoring uh, behavioral health patients. I didn't even know that. Yeah, it's pretty recent. Congratulations. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> yeah, because not many people can just make a living just playing music. Uh, it's unfortunate. No. But yeah, in this day and age, uh, you have to be kind of multifaceted. I, got a, I have a few friends that, that do, and it's, it's impressive. I mean, it really is. I mean, that's my goal personally, to be able to, you know, make a living off doing this. But, you know, also while doing other things you know we don't want to limit ourselves just i know zach wants to carry on with his pharmacy i want to do more of my filmmaking stuff so oh so um you're an aspiring filmmaker want yeah. to talk about that yeah yeah i've been doing it since 13. see how, see how 13. it all carries back man Indeed. <laughs> 13. it's um, one of my favorite numbers yeah, Teens, <laughs> right man. it's good age uh, <laughs> yeah i've been doing that since i was 13 you know making my own short films movies stuff like that and it's been going on ever since 
we will have to get you as a host sometime. Yeah. For if we ever do like a new sketch or something. Yeah. That'd He's be doing awesome. a good job, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, one thing that's really hard when it comes to like I've tried to be in a band before, and I, I couldn't do it. One of the reasons why was it is so hard to manage your time, especially when you have jobs. Like, the hardest thing I feel is like coming together, getting <clears throat> everyone together to play and perform. How do you handle your schedule? Well, organization. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's key, man. It's a lot. There's a lot that goes into um, you know managing your own band. Um, I feel like we're kind of taking more of a Rolling Stones approach. Um, with that by you know at like a business yeah and taking taking care of our, our stuff I mean we we do network with with other graphic designers and such but you know how we got started is um you know making our own business cards and that and that took that took a while making our own posters you know mm -hmm. we run through a lot of designs bounce a lot of ideas around um, you know how are we gonna get places um, and especially time management when it comes to practice it's what songs resonate the most with right. us what what should we you know kind of uh, um, hmm, I don't want to say um, assimilate but you know kind of it's it's that intense right. where where right. if, you're, if you're really stricken you know you're working 32 hours at one job and then you know eight hours at another one uh, and then then you got to be the booking agent of promotion um, agent you have to you know be the graphic designer all for your for your separate project, it, it's, it's Many taxing. Many hats, right? Yeah, it's taxing. So it's it's critical for communication. Right. But nothing is ever established without the consent of all four members. You know, that's something that we we I think we've carried since the beginning. You know, like mm -hmm. we have a private Facebook group. It's just the four of us. You know, I'll post you know shows or Zach will put a poster idea, and you know we never. Nothing's ever carried on without everybody agreeing to it, because mm. you know that. I mean, that's how conflict starts. If it does, you know what I mean. Indeed, it, it, I think it's Indeed. incredibly important that everybody be on the same page at all times. Yeah, yeah. So. It's just like last night happened. Um, we, we got double, double booked at a, at a gig. Um, but you know, we made do. We yeah, adapted. Got, got, a, <laughs> got a crew together. Everybody came out. And had a had a nice little house gathering. That was our 90th show too. So it was. Wow! Congratulations. Thank you. 90 shows. Some people can't even do one show. <laughs> right? All, Indeed. Off the Dome, man, grew up on stage. It's every day. Every day we do, I think. so. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. we're, we're still going. Still going. So right now you're, uh, you guys are in Off the Dome. Have you both been a part of other bands uh, before that? Or are you currently involved with any other bands at the moment? You want to take yeah. that one? Yeah. All right. Let's <laughs> tackle this. This is more fun than a glass and a frog of milk. I mean, <laughs> oh, <he's silly. laughs> all right, um, so I'm going to redo that really quick so you can edit that. <laughs> so um, let's see. Can you ask your question one more time? What other bands were you a part of besides Off the Dome? Um, like, what do you do now? Like, is there any other bands besides Off the Dome that you coordinate with? Yeah, I, ha I, ha I had a few projects going. Um, my first band was, was called Just Another Addiction. Okay, we uh, uh, practiced uh, by drinking root beer and eating pizza. Ooh, then, very uh, professional. Oh, yeah, totally. Sounds good. Totally. It was, it was very relaxing, but... Uh, Did you get the boys together? Ter <laughs> terribly unproductive. Terribly <laughs> unproductive. Uh, next project was a Sum 41 cover band. I learned uh, the All Killer, No Filler album. Back to back. It was ready album. to go, and we had about three practices, and uh, that fell apart pretty quickly. Um, then I joined a metal band. I was, you know, the frustration. You could see the development, you know. <laughs> just another addiction, kind of teenage angst, and then metal. Okay, need to vent the anger. Um, <laughs> but then I joined up uh, with another experimental band uh, called Dino Spumoni. Very innovative, and uh, likewise, between Spings and I, you know, we had, we had really great chemistry going. Uh, there was m one guitarist in particular, Alex DiBiase. Oh, he's Fant from Weathersfield. Fantastic. Yes, he is from Weathersfield. Fantastic songwriter. Very innovative with his melodies and harmonies. He's very in tune uh, with with uh, pulling energy from somewhere. I don't know where he pulls it from, but... 
you ever hear him live, Alex did the awesome. Yeah. He just pulls energy out of the air and just creates tasty <laughs> tunes for everyone to enjoy. Tasty tunes. What I've heard, man, I, I'd agree. But now we're with Off the Dome, and uh, I play with my dad, you know, uh, bluegrass uh, around Connecticut um, at the moment. Um, maybe we'll play down in South Carolina at some point, you know, with family or something. That'd be nice. That would be cool. Other than that, uh, Spigs and I have the Dome Duo going on yeah, right now. Yeah, Dome Duo. So that's the, that's the side project? Would you say it's side it's, project? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, just, what I guess, another development of it. It's just our acoustic stuff. You know, Zach and I, we it formed when, what was that, last year at the Latrum when Rob was in North Carolina. Our drummer Rob was in North Carolina. He was on vacation. And I think Aaron was out of town, too, or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we had a gig that we booked that we completely forgot about. So Zach and I actually went down. We played acoustic tonight, and it went, it went pretty well. Everybody seemed to enjoy it. It's more mellower, you know. It's more intimate. With you know, I think we're very personable people with the crowd, you know. So they they like talking to us, and it was fun. We had a, we had a lot of good time. So that's how the Dome Duo. That's started. the Dome Duo, man. Mm -hmm. Nice. Way better than any other project I've ever been part of. So, uh, you know, would you say you're at a high point now in your musical career? We're we're absolutely still climbing, still Definitely. climbing oh, every day, man. It's every day's a rung on the on, on the ladder. Um, you know, I I like the idea of having a, a, a musical career, um, though I think uh, music's a vehicle to to help you know develop uh, yourself and others right. around you. Right. Um, you know. It, you you've probably heard you know we, we we don't need more rock stars um more more huge celebrities we need just people good good people yeah who are doing good things um you know that's that's why i want to continue with the pharmacy and and such um i i have, I have a really big interest between medications um uh neurology and and music um so I'm trying to work on kind of like designing my own degree on on that it's really interesting so, um, some bands have their high moments and their low moments. Let's talk about that. Oh. So, so much fun. Let's start off with the high moments. So, what would you say your greatest moment as a band? A band was. I would have to say opening up for your shakedown yeah. at Toad's, yeah, at Toad's good, Place. Good call, man. That's exactly what I was thinking. Toad's Place, huh? New Haven? Yep. Yeah, in New Haven, yep. First um, time last great year. Great venue. Oh, it was, it was beautiful. It was the only mm. way to describe it, I think, right? Was, Jim Morrison got arrested there. Jim Morrison oh, got arrested yeah. there. My friend's grandfather was the one that arrested him. Oh, what a jerk. Yeah, he spit in his face, too, <laughs> oh. apparently. That's crazy. He yeah. had oh. to do his job. <laughs> but, I mean, that, that, that was a high point for us, man. We had worked so hard. And, I, and Zach, you know, Zach always says to me that we, we constantly are working hard. But we had worked so hard to get to that point. And that's, that was a milestone of mine ever since I was in high school, you know, playing the main stage at Toad's Place. So when we got the email, we were at practice one night, and it was a uh, Hollis, and she was like, "Do you guys want to open up for Shakedown?" And we, I don't even think what it, we had like two seconds before we decided that we were in. <laughs> so uh, to the viewers out there who don't know what Shakedown is, Shakedown is a Grateful Dead cover band. Um, they're very active on the East Coast. Amazing. They play great shows. They have really amazing chemistry together and they bring out so many people they really bring the grateful dead community together so you have all these deadheads in one spot and then you're opening for them right this big crowd and we just did it again recently too i mean it's nice. it's gotten to a point where it would be nice if we could do that every year i think right indeed, indeed. you know indeed. so um it's it's just it's a great time man you know we get to go hang out in the green room afterwards with all our friends oh, it's the green room it's fun, man. We, we have a good time. It sounds like it. Now, there's good times. And like I said, there's bad times. <laughs> there is. So uh, what would you say the lowest point that you overcome as a band during mm. your musical journey? Um, it was that time Rob forgot the rug. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, man, we, rug. We, left, we left Raja uh, <laughs> hanging, hanging there. Uh, that was... That was difficult. Um, no, but besides bass drums sliding around, um, there was one time up in Boston uh, <laughs> where we uh, yeah. we kind of dabbled in, uh, in in partying a little bit. Um, 
too hard be, before and during and during the gig, um, so we weren't quite up to par. Um, you know, and that and that and that's difficult because um, emotionally you have to deal with that as as a performer. You're there to engage your fans and you know share share this energy that we got going on, and and really it's a reciprocating thing, and you know if you you know you know kind of party too hard beforehand you know you, you experience blocks okay right and you know you can't communicate with them about how you feel you know and you know they necessarily won't you know be able to give that energy back to you if you, if you can't communicate yeah so like if you play bad people are gonna know and they're gonna react to that exactly so we kind of watch the room uh, population yeah, yeah. dwindle slowly and you know we weren't really aware of it at the time and ever since then you know we've kind of made like a an internal agreement to be clear-headed before any and all shows you know yeah. i mean very important i mean very i mean what, if you think about it, you know we're if we're the group higher fact we're there to entertain you know if, yeah. if we can't do that then yeah like, you know what I what's mean? the point yeah exactly so you got to be professionals about it and right drinking before the show man exactly yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a bit of advice that i pass on to anybody Definitely. aspiring um you know uh feel free to explore and and navigate any extra realms as you please but um you know just stay persistent and don't give up uh it's gonna be a long road and uh you will experience temptation uh that's the challenge of life, you know, overcoming. Such is music. <laughs> so speaking of the music that you guys make, I really, really like it. You guys have some amazing original hits. What I want to know is, how do you go about writing these songs? What's the process like? I know you guys both write your own songs, like so. You know, you probably have a different process than. You oh do. yeah, I mean, it. it it depends, a lot of the times, I think what's similar is most of the time, most of our ideas come to us late at night, right? <laughs> you know, he's working till midnight. I, I'm sometimes just up late playing guitar, and so, you know, I call him. I'm like, dude, listen to this over the play it over the phone, and which, as you know, stuff over the phone is not probably sounds old. <sighs> but um, but the, that's how you know right, when even the garbled sounds if it's, good. If that's good. Then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, but uh, you know, a lot of the songs just come. To, I know for lyrics, I mean, come from just my own experiences, and a lot of the guitar stuff just comes from just natural. You know, I mean, it just, I just if it feels good, we're gonna play. You know, and I, I'm, I don't know, I don't know if yours any different. Um, yeah, a little, a little bit. Um, I am quite frequently up late. It's something that I've wrestled with uh, for many years. Um, music was kind of an aid in that. Uh, gave me something to do while I was awake. Um, I think about my day, think about the people I've met, who I'm grateful for, experiences that, that I'm grateful for. Um, try to be very sincere with my music. I actually don't try, I, I, you know, I'm kind of downplaying myself there. I, I'm sincere in my music. I make, I make a point to be, to be sincere. Um, like, like we keep mentioning, or at least I keep mentioning, uh, you know, conveying that emotion right. and communicating through music, it's, it, it's, it's really important. So when I'm sitting there, um, frequently my ego will take over and it's all, it's all about me. It's all about me and how I feel. And then once I'm in that headspace, it, it's hard to let other people in. But the challenge of songwriting is figuring out how to... R relate to people and, and, and right. letting go of that ego, kind of letting that dissolve. And once that happens, um, you're kind of, uh, so, some people might say it's God talking to them or, or they're having a divine experience. Uh, I know I've had dreams where I'll hear guitar parts or, or certain musical scores and I'll wake up and I'll, and I'll try to innovate with them. I'm, lucid dreaming also helps when you're trying to write a song. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes I, I also find too that the best ideas come to you when you're not near your guitar, <laughs> which, yeah, right. which for me is uh, the most frustrating thing ever when I'm working and I'm like oh and then so and then you take out the phone and yeah. you'll be like 
boom, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yes. but Either you're listening to it later. Yeah, trying to get it with your child. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh, I, I just love your songs. They're so catchy and thank you. You know, I'd really like you guys to get like more exposure. But have you ever considered like if you became famous or even more well, like broadly known? Yeah. What would you do? Like, what would your plans be? Have you ever considered that? We talked yeah. about this yesterday. Yes, actually. we did. Nice. Uh, What's the one word? Uh, well, <laughs> well, there's there's two actually, Ph- philanthropy and travel. Yeah, I mean, we're both we're both adventurers at heart, man. You know, we to be able to play all over and just stick, I mean, you know, it, and it wouldn't be just for the music. I mean, you know, Zach's pharmacy studies can carry all over the country. You know, my filmmaking, I would love to you know do stuff all across the country. You know, and combine that with music. I mean. We'd be sitting pretty. <laughs> It'd be, life, life is life would be good. Um, but to just play, I mean, in general, is just our goal. You know, I mean, yeah. that's what we, we what we love to do. Whether it's for two people or two thousand, indeed. <laughs> and not that life isn't good right now. You know, I mean, we're, we're right. constantly living the dream. Um, Definitely, man. And that's not sarcastic at all. We really are uh, constantly dreaming. And uh, yeah. And to achieve that dream, you got to do a lot of work. Like you said before, that you you make posters and designs and everything. Uh, you probably have to get your name out there somewhere. So do you have like a Facebook or a, we a website that we people do. can go to and see your music? Yes. Um, if you'd like to check out our self-titled album, this is our first album. You can check it out at offthedome.bandcamp.com. Okay. Uh, you can listen for free. It's five dollars on there. That's all we're asking cost us over uh, a grand to make so <laughs> just to throw some numbers out there a lot of hours in the studio yeah but much credit to um, uh, Jeremy Siegel and John Bullduck man oh man was Massaphonic Studios in Manchester that was a beautiful experience John made us sound wonderful indeed years of, of experience in the field uh, he did work with Sony and very inspiring guy very very supportive um and and very lax in the studio very professional and and right um on point when he needs to be stern you know uh with takes because you got to be you got to be managed like you mentioned mm-hmm. uh time management is critical um but you know he he brought a lot to the table and helped bring us up um and we are also on facebook of course obviously that's our our bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. Our, our our main outlet at the moment. Um, we do also have a website under construction that's yes. that's being worked on right now. Um, no Twitter. We, then, <laughs> we don't tweet. Yeah, <laughs> no Twitter. Uh, we do have an Instagram though. Yes. And also on Reverb Nation, you can get the free off the dome app, so you can take the dome wherever you go. Mobile dome. <laughs> <laughs> Mobile dome. Nice. Oh man, I I wouldn't want to carry myself in my pocket. No, man. Man. no, I'm, I'm probably I can't crap fit out in anybody's myself. pocket, man. I know about that much. <laughs> fit in my pocket pretty well. I was listening to you guys on the way here. Right on. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a favorite song by us? Is there uh, one that maybe you'd want to hear later? Later, I'm not too sure, but I really do like your "Honey Loving B Creed" song. It is just, it's just the longer. St- Song, but it's probably the longest song that you have on your newest album. Yeah, maybe and we should play that one later. We could do that one. It's, yeah, yeah. I really like it because we should do three originals. It um, it kind of sounds like three songs like together, yeah. but they they kind of like melt into each other. I really like Ooh. that. See, and and that's the thing you're asking about uh, song creation uh, earlier. Um, uh, something that I've learned from uh, like Nick Bielo, Eric Stenson, and um, I neglected to mention one one musician earlier, Greg Fortin, um, fantastic guitar player. Um, I've had very little instruction with him, but every time has been super meaningful, and just the knowledge in each session, less is more, okay? And uh, with that, uh, this combination, and uh, from being an orchestra, you, you learn about movements in songs. Uh, each each big section, each movement is a is an expression, and so it's all what you want to. I'm gonna keep coming back to this: what you want to convey in each movement, because um, whatever key you're in, 
or whatever scales you might be using, you know, um, if you decide to go modal, which is changing keys in, in a tune, which we, which we do. Um, Frequently. Yes. And uh, that, it creates a different vibe. It creates a different emotion. Minor keys will, you know, tend to make you, you know, sad and, you know, can cause nostalgia, reflecting, or even a good way to vent. Um, then major keys, you know, will, will be uplifting. It's, have you heard the song Hallelujah? You, you know that song? Yeah. You put it in track and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, the, um, the minor fall and the major right. lift. Yeah, that's what he. That's what he means in that. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. This jerk is calling me. I don't know. I don't even know who this is. Oh, oh yeah. How right. dare they interrupt our interview? Right. Oh. Just gonna throw that over there. You did write a song one time, I believe. You you write songs, correct? Eh, I dabble. Dabble. <laughs> but uh, speaking of. Do you have any advice for aspiring musicians or kids who want to grow up to be just like you or Jack Black? <laughs> well, don't Jack. just be like us, I must say. Uh, <laughs> not that we're not role models. We're, we're such role models, right? Of course, of course. My, my <laughs> main advice, man, that I would give that, I, I, that I've been given over and over is to play with people that are better than you. Mm -hmm. That is, I mean, I, I, I go to Donovan's Reef Open Mike Night on Thursdays in Brantford's, and that's where I met... Guys like Sean Chua and Wade Rice and Ed Sufer and Paul Battles and Timmy and you know the list the list goes on and on and they're all they're all in their late thirties early forties and they've been playing since they were like fourteen thirteen you know so they know what they're doing you know and it pushes you I mean it really does you know you're you're not not that it's not that you're trying to get on the same level as them but you're you're inspired to explore more you know you're inspired to do different things and mm -hmm. try different things you know I'm sure that. You, when you go to the bluegrass jams, it's the same way, you know. Absolutely, and and you know, always great communities, uh, very welcoming. Um, we have a, it's a really good bluegrass community here in uh, in Connecticut. Um, I know Bill Fisher does uh, the uh, Bethany Music and Dance uh, gathering every every month. Um, my dad was actually at that the other night, last night, uh, while we were doing our gig. Um, but yeah, I don't even know what we were talking about. I just totally trailed off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Advice for, to kids. Okay, advice to kids. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's my advice. Um, don't give up. You're going to experience rough patches. People are going to downplay you. People will tell you, you know, maybe that's not exactly what you want to be singing about, but, you know, you may discover that's exactly what you want to be singing about. Um, there's a lot going on uh, with, you know, paradigm shifts, and uh, by that I mean, you know, cultural ideals are, are, are changing. Uh, we're, we're growing as a species, and, um, you know, just stay motivated. Stay motivated. It's, it's tough. It's a tough journey, um, but, um, you know. Uh, but it's the journey I'd, that matters, not, not the, the destination. destination. <laughs> and on that note, I would like to thank you guys for being on this show. I got some awesome homegrown talent T-shirts for you. Oh, right wonderful, so, wonderful. Let me get one of those. All right. Yours. Thank you. Now, Fantastic. I would love for the Dome Duo to play a set for us. Oh, yeah, right, absolutely. absolutely. I think we can do that. All right. We can do that. The Dome Duo coming up next. All right. This is a new one, right? This is a new tune called Hearts of the Waiting.
This is not a, this is not a new one. This is, <laughs> this is this is off our debut album that you can find at offthedome.bandcamp.com. I know this is one of Zach's favorites to play, and it's an absolute pleasure to write. So let's do it. This one's called Science. Thank you. 
this one off. Okay, right? excellent. So this one is called Honey Love and Creed B. It's dedicated to our wonderful host, Mr. John Reynolds.
Thank you.